Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Miss Jennifer Blank, and I'm here to tell you about some key vocab of the progressive era. All right, so we're going to start out with the two, I would argue, driving, primary driving causes of the progressive era. We're going to start out with uh, industrialization and urbanization. Okay, so first off, well, you know what? Let's start out with actually a definition of progressivism, shall we? All right, so progressivism is this, okay? You see progressivism, the word there, and then here's our definition, okay? It's a term applied to a variety of responses to the economic and social problems rapid industrialization introduced to America, all right? A source I got from this was, a, or for this was the George Washington University. That's a pretty pretty good definition. Um, problem with definitions is they, they only tell us so much, right? This is like a big picture overview, but we're going to need, in order to understand Understand the progressive era to take a real close look at those variety of responses right there are a lot of different methods that people uh, during this era use to combat these economic and social problems right so that's the basic definition of, um, of progressivism so all right so let's take a look at industrialization right industrialization is right here in blue all right process of shifting toward mass production and mechanization Basically, this is the creation of the modern factory system, the idea of uh, individual folks uh, controlling an entire process, say like the making of shoes or um, a blacksmith, like they would do from start to finish the entire product within their one shop, right? Um, you were a master at, at, at this particular process. <clears throat> And you were responsible for all stages of it. Now, during the Industrial Revolution, uh, we were able to uh, grant better access to products. Products were cheaper as well because instead of having one person be in control of all aspects of production, you had that production broken up into little ch 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 right? So you train somebody to do this step and then train another person to do this step, and it would just move through very, very quickly. As we should be aware of, time is money. So if you can make things faster, then that's going to drop the price. This drop in price of many goods made them more accessible to your average American. So there were good things that resulted from industrialization, but there were also bad things as well. We learned about that in the previous industrialization unit, so I hope you remember. Now, let's shift gears and pop on over to urbanization, the definition of which is right here. So that is the movement of population from rural to urban areas and the resulting increase that's increasing in proportion of population in those urban areas. Okay, so it's not just that people are moving from one place to the other, it's that the concentration of population is becoming very intense in those urban areas. Whenever you have a very sudden and dramatic influx of people into a small area, you're going to have some issues. You're going to name competition for resources. This is going to cause some, some concern. And so these two processes, industrialization and urbanization, are what drove the progressive era. All right, They were trying to find solutions to these problems. There were a lot of economic and social problems and they wanted to solve them. So that's effectively what the progressives were all about. Now some other key vocab I want us to discuss. First we're going to start off with political machines which grew out of the corruption of both political corruption and um, economic corruption of the uh, robber barons, the industrial tycoons that had control of all this wealth. So people were trying to find ways, okay well we don't have money like these guys have money but it's one man one vote and we have people. So how can we come together and figure out a way to use that population, that number, that big number to our advantage and try to fight back against some of this corruption. So uh, this solution, which actually turned out to be a problem as you move through the progressive era, but we'll talk about that more in class. Let me give you the definition. So a political machine is an organization in which an authoritative boss or a small group uh, commands a core of supporters and businesses, okay? And how they command them is they promise them stuff. These people, in exchange for uh, contributing uh, and working for uh, these, part, uh, these political machines, they get rewards. That could be jobs, that could be any uh, some cash, that could be any number of things. So basically, the political machines were bribing these already poor people to help them 
uh, uh, have more political power in the system right now. Some people were decent folks about it. They really did have the interest, best interest of the public at heart. Many of these political party bosses, they called them, the bosses of the political machines were quite corrupt in and of themselves and took advantage of already downtrodden folks. Um, now, this other arrow goes to the spoil system. You should remember the spoil system from Andrew Jackson, all right? That's when really uh, this system took shape in American history. But the spoil system was very effectively used by political machines, and that is basically rewards for your support or for your efforts to, to help support a, a given organization, in this case, a political machine. Okay, so there's political machines. Now, let's spend a second talking about muckrackers, all right, muckrackers, another term for muckrackers is um, yellow journalism. These people basically, they were reporters, they were journalists, and they searched for political scandals anywhere they could find them. Now, these could be sex scandals, these could be bribery scandals, whatever it was. If it involved politics and it was, ooh, they wanted to find out, they wanted to investigate, and they wanted to write about it, okay, and share it with the public. So, um, in theory, this is a good idea, but um, in our society, yellow journalism or muckracking has like given way to sort of like celebrity culture where we're obsessed with what Brangelina is eating this morning for breakfast sort of thing. Um, or I guess that's really not an appropriate analogy since they're divorced now. But anyway, not that's here, neither here nor there. The point is, their goal was to root out political corruption, to report about it, to make people aware of it so that something could be done about it, okay? That, that's what muckracking is all about. Um, so they inquire into, give me, let me give you an official definition, they inquire into and publish scandal and allegations of corruption among political and business leaders, right? That is muckracking. All right, now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the temperance movement, all right? The temperance movement was a movement to ban alcohol whole um, on the basis of Christian morality okay now these folks started during the reform era of, uh, of the 1800s and around the 1820s 1830s 1840s and they carried through the 19th century into the 20th with the eventual successful passage of the 18th amendment which was prohibition it banned alcohol and made us a dry country now we're going to talk about the um, disastrous effects of prohibition um, in class uh, in, in much more detail but uh, uh, suffice to say that prohibition is what gave us, gave birth to the mafia, to the mob. So, yay. Good job, guys. You banned it, and now we got worse stuff. That was worse than alcohol, right? But anyway, uh, that's a subject for another day. This is some key vocab. I hope you learned what you needed to. I want you to study this stuff because we are going to be quizzed on it in class. So I hope you learned what you needed to, and I will see you in the next video.